Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a database insert. The application for this would be to store your production metrics into your database. So if you click on new, and I'm just going to type in production data, double click on that project, then this is going to open up our project editor. If I come up here to adapters and double click on automation, I can see the PLCs that I have access to. So I'm going to be working with this Control Logics PLC that's in this rack. Um, the T manager that I'm using actually resides in this rack. But also, if I wanted to go out one of the Ethernet ports, you can see that there's a Compact Logics PLC on the network that I could also pull tags from. Um, to be able to do that, you have to have the Ethernet IP license add on, um, but it defaults comes from us default where you can talk across the control logics rack backplane. I'm going to open the tag list for that control logics PLC and you can see that I have access to all the tags that are residing in that PLC. We support arrays and UDTs and all the other data types. Um, you can see that we also have access to all this without having to do any configuration to the PLC or do anything in Studio 5000. Team Manager can talk natively to that PLC and pick up everything it has. Next, I'm going to set up my connection to my database. So I'm going to do new adapter and I'm connecting to a Microsoft SQL database. So I'm going to right click on automation and new adapter, new Microsoft SQL adapter. And then I'm just going to enter in the IP address of that database. And then the name and my SQL Server authentication username and password. And I'm going to click validate connection. Connection is valid and I'm going to go ahead and enumerate that database. So select all the values that I want to all the tables and databases I want to have access to. And I'm going to click select all because I want everything and select all again. And then since that was successful, if I go into tables and double click that, I can see all the tables that I have access to. Now if we come into my database that I've had IT manager set up for us because we we're required to log all these values, let's say, and I can see that there's a column for operator, so whoever's operating the machine, we're going to put in a timestamp, and then there's the other metrics like cycle time, which line it was on, the pass count, the fail count, and the total production count. And so he had already set this table up in our SQL database. So if I go to message paths and I do add message path, I'm going to be doing an insert because I'm inserting data from the PLC into the database. And you can see I'm going to need a trigger, a map, and an endpoint. So to create my trigger, I'm going to go to automation do new trigger and so there's different types of triggers and we cover those in our trigger video but I'm going to be doing a periodic trigger and I'm going to be uh, evaluating that if if the tag that I put in here from my tag list changes then I'm going to execute the trigger and that means that we're going to every time that that changes we're going to fire transaction to store the data into the database so if I open tag list from that control logics PLC, I'm going to monitor the production count. So every time the production count changes, we're going to fire a transaction and store those values. I click OK. Now I have my trigger. I can drag and drop it in. And you can see I need a map. So I'm going to come over here to maps. And since I'm only doing data from the PLC into the database, it's going to be a unidirectional map. And then if 
for my inputs. It's going to be my control logics PLC tags because I'm inputting the, that data into the database. And for my output, it's going to be my database table. So I'm going to highlight all these columns and pull them into my output. Yes, I would like to grab everything from that table. Blow this window up a little bit. And now if I come back to my PLC tags, I'm going to grab production count and drop it in. I'm going to go ahead and grab pass count also. Line number. And grab fail count and cycle time. And now you can see that we still have the operator and the time columns to fill in. So for operator, we have the ability to create constants. I'm going to go ahead and create a constant with my name. And so that fills that in. And then under macros, we have a thing for a timestamp. So I'm going to drag that in also. And then if I just click to connect all these, it'll go it straight across. But if you didn't have them lined up, you could draw a line and put it across to the correct values. And if I click OK, I can go over here to the map and drag and drop it in. And then I need to create an endpoint. So the endpoint is going to be based off this database. If I right click on it and click new endpoint, and this would be where you'd configure your transaction logs if you wanted to keep those and monitor it, or if you wanted to do a store and forward for in case your network went down, we have the ability to store that data. And, or if you wanted to do a failover where it would try a different database, but we cover that stuff more in depth in our endpoint video. Click okay, open that up and drag and drop it in. Now I have everything configured. I just need to set all these to run and also set my project to run. We should start putting data in our database. If I come back to the database and I do select top thousand rows, you can already see that we started putting data in. So there's five values in. If I hit execute, now there's eight. So every time that this production count tag changes that's in our PLC, we're firing or executing a transaction to store that data. So, and that's it for how to store your production data using a database insert. If you have a topic you would like covered, please leave it in the comments section below.